In Module 2, we will talk about basic concept from the assembly language. We will complete Chapter 1 from the textbook. In Chapter 1, we have four sections. We already covered the first two in Module 1 last week. So this week, in our two class lecture, we will talk about data representation on Tuesday lecture. Then on Thursday lecture, we will focus on the Boolean operation. So the first thing let's talk about what are data representation. Data representation we need to think about is how should we save data in the hardware. Like we told you, your hardware usually when you buy your hard drive or by the RAM, they will tell you that's the one terabyte in your hard drive or 16 gigabytes in your RAM. So you can see the unit to calculate the storage is the byte. So we know each byte is a bit. Each bit in computer system only have zero or one. So those data, we have so many different data we need to store, but they are all stored in the bit. No matter you want to represent a character, or you want to represent an integer number or a floating number. No matter what, when they save in the memory, they save in 1 and 0. So that's why the first thing when we talk about how to represent the data, we need to talk about the first thing is a binary number. So that's our first video we will talk about the binary number. You will see what is our binary number then how we convert between the binary number and the decimal number. So when we say the decimal number, that's our the human read number, right? We start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 10, then 11, you just continue to count. But in the computer world, we only have the binary number that's 1 or 0. Then we will talk about the binary addition. So in the next video, we will talk about the hex decimal. The same thing, hex decimal can translate and convert between the decimal number and the hex decimal number. Then we will talk about that. In the third video, we will talk about sign integer. Because remember, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We also have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. How we will save those information. And also when we talk about the character, they actually still store 1 or 0 in that bit. But how we will do that? So we will talk about the ASCII table. So that's the first thing. Let's talk about what our binary number. So just like earlier we say, each one byte has a bit. So each bit that's considered is the digit one we want to represent. But in the computer system, if we talk about the binary number, each digit actually only can be 0 or 1. Usually, we're using the 1 to represent true. 0 represents false. So you can see here, the digit, this one, the digit when we talk about, right? So the digit, just regular in real life, our digit is what? Yeah, in real life, when I told you the two-digit number, like 19, Right, so one number is one digit. But in real life is what? We're using a decimal system. So we start from digits can be one, can be two. Yeah, actually I should start from zero. Each digit can be zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so here I just don't um type everything. So you should know. In the decimal system, in real life, we start from zero, one, two, three, four, and till nine. But that's for the hat, for the decimal system. But for the binary system, each digit, you only can be 1 or 0. So now here we just show you when you see the bit numbering, how they look like. So this one we're using the 2 byte, for example. So since 2 byte, you have yeah, 16 bits, right? So you can see here, you have 16 bits. So usually we say from 0 digit to the 15 digit. So each digit represents one bit. And here, since you have a number like this, right, then we talk about 
if the number on the most left, we call that the most significant bit. If the bit is on the very right, we call that least significant bit. You can see that's the same thing, right? Like regularly in the decimal system. On decimal system, for example, like we say, we have 123. So one actually is 100 digit, three is single digit. So that's why the most left, most left, they have the highest value. Most right, they have the least value. So that is the binary number. So mostly when we represent binary number, because we represent in the computer world. So you can either give me one byte, two byte. So in this example, that's a two byte number. Right, so here you can see each bit, they are either zero or one. But after I give you this two byte binary number right like this, right? They do have their equivalent value. So that's what we will see here, how to calculate the binary number value. So the binary number actually, like we say, you just think about you are, they are the same as the decimal number. They have each digit represent one value. Just because in the real world situation, decimal number, the base is what? Decimal number, the value is 10. Like earlier we show you, 1, 2, 3, they represent what? 123. So actually these three, the three on the very right, they are 10 to the zeroth power. 2 is 20, right? So it's 10. So 10 to the 1's power. 1 is 100, so it's 10 to the second's power. So that's why decimal number we're using the base is 10. Binary number we're using the base is 2, right? So that's why here I give you one byte number. All the bits are 1. So then from the most um, right, they start from 2 to the zeroth power for this value. So this value, this digit value is 2 to the zeroth power. So go to the left, they just increment the exponent by 1. But their base is O2, uh, O equal to 2. So on the other hand, you can see all the value for different bits. Their decimal value, 2 to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the 7th power is 128. So this one represents 1 only. But this one actually represents what? Because this one is at 2 to the 7th power. So this one actually represents 128 in the decimal system. So that's why if I give you a binary number like this, right? If we want to convert this binary, bin, binary number into the decimal value, you need to add one by one. So this one equal to one. This one equal to two. This one is 2 to the second power, so this digit, their value actually is 4. So continue one by one. So even they are both, they are all 1, but different digit location is different. Their value is different. So this 1 by number, they are all 1. The decimal value is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16, 32, 64, 128. Uh, so then at the end, the answer is 255. So that's what we talk about. You have number represent in the binary, but any binary number you can convert to decimal. So you need to wait, you need to wait it, the position no notation. Depends on the digit location. You need to using this value to times the value for that location. So since here is all one, so we just add together. But sometimes you can see here, even we just using the digit, binary digit to multiply the value, right? Okay, so sometimes, for example, now, since you understand earlier, we say how to using the binary number to convert to the decimal. So then you can see here, your binary number look at like this, but zero times any value will be 
zero. So that's why we don't care the zero bit. But here you have one. But this one, the equivalent value is two to the second, uh, two to the third power. So that's eight. So you see zero, we don't care. So this one is one. So here your binary equivalent to zero 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 one zero zero one. But your decimal number represent us only a plus one is nine. So sometimes during the class or during the test, it's better you just write down the value for each bit. So then you just multiply to add on to add them together. So now here we have the next example. I want you to practice with this one to find the decimal number. So then you can post the video, then check your answer. Yeah, very good. So you can see you have your one. They need to times the value. Okay, so after they add all together. So that's why we got the final value is 45. Yeah, so if you have a question, write it down. Uh, so we will talk about more about your question during the Zoom meeting. So after we understand how to convert the binary number to the decimal number, on the other hand, sometimes we have a decimal number I want to convert to the binary as well. For example, now if I have 37, how should I convert into the binary number? So there are a couple different ways. So in the textbook, they show you is, since you have 37, right, you just divide by 2. You have quotient and the remainder. After you divide, the remainder will go to the least significant bit. So they will move to the very left, or very right. Okay, so you will move to the very right. So then continue using the quotient to divide by 2 again. So that's 9. But remainder is 0. So all the remainder, you will start from the left to put one, one by one. So that's why you can see all the remainder will continue to divide. They are 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. But you feel I'll start from the most left. So that's why 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 equal to 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. So all the quotient is just help you to do the next on uh, next division. Okay, so that's one way textbook to show you like this. But for myself, how I do the thirty seven to change to the decimal, we can using the table here we have because that's your digit value, right? So you just see here if you have this table, you can see thirty seven, which number most close to thirty. Seven, but not greater than 37, right? So you see that's 32. So 32, you put 1 for the 32. So then actually here is the first digit you have. So then 37, I have 32, right? So 37 minus 32 become... 37 minus 32 become 5, right? Good. So 5, the most close one is 4. So that's why I know the four. I need to have one as well. So eight and zero, they just eight and sixteen, they just zero. So then I have one for the four. So then I have thirty-seven minus thirty-two, minus four. So we have one remaining. So that's why these two should be zero. So then you have the one. So that's why here thirty-seven in decimal can equal to this. But most of the time, even your most digits, you only have totally six digits now, right? But whenever we write the binary, they need to be either one byte or two byte. So here we only have six bits. So then you need to fill up the first two. Uh, so that's how the 37 equal to the binary number. Uh, so that's the other way you can convert decimal number to the binary number. You can just to fill out the digit then find which digit you need that's the way i like uh, but one thing is of course textbook this way will be much more straightforward using the division okay so that's the first video i don't have enough time but i will continue in the next video to talk about the binary addition